Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. Today's lesson, I'm going to be walking you through a high-level overview of the Microsoft 365 Defender Security Center. In my previous lesson, I showed you how Microsoft 365 Defender is an integrated experience of Microsoft's suite of security services that spans Defender for Identity, Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Office 365, and Cloud App Security. Over the years, Microsoft's had many different portals to access security-related services, but now they've unified these portals under security.microsoft.com, which is where I am currently. Depending on what licensing you have within your tenant, the options available to you on this left-hand nav may be a little bit different. I'm in a tenant here that has Microsoft 365 E5, so it has access to the security suite that I'll be walking you through today. I will not be covering all tabs here today as part of this initial introduction, but I will be popping into the ones that I feel like are the most important. Starting off with the dashboard here, you can see key insights across identity, devices, email, and applications. The dashboard is completely customizable and each card can take you into another part of the security center to access more information about the topic. The incidents and alerts section is probably the most powerful section in my opinion. This is the location that correlates signals across the suite of security offerings and consolidates them into incidents. Clicking into these incidents, brings you to a page where you can see things like timeline, scope, and all of the evidence that made up the incident. The service is also tagging these events with a severity score to help you with the prioritization of response. This kind of correlation would take days if not weeks in some cases, but it's all done in an automated fashion for you. Speaking of automation, the investigations tab allows you to see automated investigations that were triggered from alerts generated as part of the incident. Evidence can be seen across files, processes, IP addresses, and URLs for suspicious or malicious events. A graphical view can also be shown that shows you the attack chain. You can even play the attack story here on the left to see how things were correlated over time. The alert section shows all generated alerts across the suite of product offerings as well. Here you can filter the alerts based off of a particular service like Defender for Identity, for instance. And once you apply that, it'll only bring up alerts particular to that service. Additionally, when you click into an alert, you're able to classify it as a true or false alert to help with the machine learning components of the service over time. The alert provides descriptions, recommended actions, the linked incidents in a full scope of impact. Threat hunting is also available here so you can run advanced queries against your environment. Microsoft is providing you a ton of automation on the detection and response capabilities. And they provide this threat hunting tool so you can become more proactive with discovering threats in your organization. Pre-made queries are available here if you're not familiar with the KQL language and they do mimic a lot of things that you can do here from running queries within your organization. The Action Center is where you can see recommended actions from automated investigations that require your approval, as well as a history of all the actions you've taken in the past. The Threat Analytics page is information coming straight from Microsoft's security team. They're providing you with a ton of information about new threats in the market and showing you any assets within your organization that are exposed to these threats as well. Clicking into one of these threats pulls up tons of details about the threat as well as some weaknesses in your organization that might lead to compromise. Secure score information shows you recommended actions to take within your environment across identities, endpoints, and applications. Each improvement action can be evaluated within your organization and it can help you improve your secure score over time. The Learning Hub provides a ton of resources to help you get up to speed with the Defender suite of products. Since there's been so many changes recently, Microsoft wanted to provide a central location to get update information on their products. The next section here, Endpoints, is specifically focusing on the Defender for Endpoint product offering. It includes complete device inventory of all discovered devices on your network, and it also provides a separate threat and vulnerability management dashboard. The Threat and Vulnerability Dashboard allows you to see key insights into the top vulnerabilities on your devices that may relate to the device configuration itself or vulnerabilities in software on that device. Known CVEs are published within the Weaknesses section here and you can see how many devices are exposed to that particular CVE. Simulations can be run against test devices that mimic common threats used in the market today. These simulations allow you to get a better feel for how Microsoft Defender triages and correlates incidents in the security portal. So I highly recommend checking this section out. 
The next section here, email and collaboration, relates to the Defender for Office 365 product line. Here you can see investigations that relate to incidents across email that are either automatically triggered by Microsoft through user submission or through an admin creating a new investigation from this Explorer section. The Explorer section allows you to save specific queries across various pieces of metadata and provides a ton of insight into what's going on within your organization. Users can report email messages, which can then be submitted to Microsoft directly for further analysis. And those user reported messages can be seen here within the submission section over on the left hand side. Campaigns can track email clusters and other malicious events like phishing that are occurring across your organization. So you can track these and you can create a save query off of this as well. Under the attack simulation training section here, this can be conducted across your organization to mimic common social engineering techniques used today. You can scope this to certain users or groups within your organization, and you can actually assign security awareness training to users who fail those simulations. Under the policies and rules, you can begin to define policies for anti-phishing, anti-spam, safe links, and safe attachments, which helps prevent malware and phishing events within your organization. Microsoft even has predefined policies that you can leverage here to get you started if you're not familiar with what these policies are or if you want a baseline level of security within your organization. Finally, under the more resources section here, you have access to various admin portals that may include more functionality for a particular domain. The only one that I want to call out here is the Cloud App Security Portal. While Microsoft has stitched in much of the identity services with MCAS into the Microsoft 365 Defender Portal, there's still many features related to applications that can only be conducted in that admin center at the time of this recording. We'll be doing deeper dives on Cloud App Security in later lessons, so stay tuned for that. That's everything I wanted to show for you guys today in this video on Microsoft's 365 Defender Security Center. Stay tuned for the next lesson where I'll begin to dissect the individual components of Microsoft 365 Defender, starting with Defender for Identity. Thanks guys, have a great day.